for the next page, for 9 through 16, 9 and 10 are test like. I will be asking you to work backwards and find a missing part using the formula because this is the area of a trapezoid. The formula for the area of a trapezoid is one half base one plus base two times the height. Since they told us the area is 126, so 126 goes in place of the A. So we're going to do one half. One of the base was 15. We don't know the other base, but we know the height is 9. So the first thing we would do, because we're taking a half of this expression, is get rid of that by multiplying by 2. And that would give us 252 is equal to 15 plus B times 9. And then I can distribute, so I can solve for our B. So 252 is equal to 135 plus 9B. And then when I subtract the 135, I get my B by itself, which will give me 117 equals 9B. We divide by 9, and we get B is 13. You are going to be expected to work backwards, and I believe the shape is a trapezoid. So here I gave you a hint. Since you should primitive to find the missing leg of the isosceles trapezoid. Isosceles trapezoid means the legs. This is where our legs are are congruent. Well, since I know the perimeter is your distance around 48 minus 28, that's our sum of our bases, divide by 2 would give me my two legs. So um, basically that would give me 10. And I'll just put that right there. So I know the legs are 10, 10, and 10. And now they want us to find the height. Your height is always perpendicular. Since I know, and I was trying to show you this with the highlighting, since this is eight, eight opposite sides are congruent, eight and eight, and the whole thing is 20. So I do 20 minus eight. That would give me my 12. And then these two pieces are going to be the same, so divide by two. So now I know this is six. So I'm not sure if you all see this, but this is a triple because I have 10, six, and this would have to be eight. Okay. Basically, 3, 4, 5, if I had a 3, 4, 5, and the hypotenuse is double, then they have to be double, 4 have to be double, so which is 8. Now, they just asked for the height. Uh, I might ask you on your test to, from there, give me the area, so there's just one extra step. So, 9 and 10 are test light. Um, on the circle part, just make sure you can give me your answer in terms of pi. We've done this. We did this last six weeks. So, the radius is 25. So we're going to do basically 25 squared and put our pi. So this was 625 pi. And then circumference, uh, we have the formulas. This is the diameter, so I'm done. 1,200 pi. Whatever the diameter, just put the pi behind it. That's our circumference. Then we have composite. Composite figures are when we're going to have to add. So whenever we see a composite figure, we're going to have to add up the parts, area of the parts. Uh -huh. I don't know if I can put it up there. Area of the parts. All right, so break it up into basic shapes. So I just went ahead, drew my horizontal line here. Remember, opposite sides are going to be congruent. So if that's three, that's going to be three there. And so I see I have a six by three, which is 18. And then I have a six by eight, which is 48. So to get the total area, we're just going to add up the parts. So 18 plus the 48 gives us 66 centimeters squared. 14, which is the test light dealing with shaded. Anytime we're having shaded, you're going to have to do some type of subtraction. So please remember that. Um, here I have to find the area of shaded. You take the area of the square minus the area of the circle. The square we have basically to find the length of the square, I use the radius and the diameter. So this diameter is 8. So that means this is 8 and 8. So we got 8 squared minus the area of the circle, which is basically pi times 4 squared, so 64 minus 16 pi. This is the exact answer right here, exact answer. You cannot subtract those because they are not like terms. This is the approximate answer. Put it in the calculator, and that's the decimal answer, okay? Hey, I'm ex uh, you could have exact answers as an answer choice. Just know what that looks like. I have both, so don't worry about it. Uh, don't stress. Uh, 15. I think the easiest way 
when I see this dotted line, it's imaginary, um, this is a part that's taken out. So I'd rather just do the whole, the whole um, rectangle is the 12 by 16. And then the space that I'm taking out is the 4 by 12. So the whole would, ooh, excuse me, would end up giving us the 192 minus the 48, so 144 feet squared. And yes, this was test-like. Shaded, unshaded, no, shaded. So again, so some type of subtraction. So the whole square, which would be 25 squared, or 25 times 25, times the triangle. Now, I need the base and I need the height of the triangle. Well, think about this. If this whole thing is 25 and that's 10, then the remaining part would have to be 15 to give us a total of 25. If this is 5, then my base, my remaining part here, would have to be 20. So now I have my base and my height divided by 2. So this was 625 for a 25 square. Then the area of the triangle uh, is 150. We subtract them, we get 475 yards square. Um, just a side note. Remember, whatever your base is has to be perpendicular to your height. So where that box is lets me know where the B and the H are at all times. Just a, just a recap. And so that takes care of that page. Uh, fast forward to the next if you don't need it.